Hello chess fans, this is Brian Castro from Better Chess Training. Today I'm going to do a short video explaining a four-step process that you can use to analyze your games for improvement. In future videos, I'll break this process down and show you how I do it using tools like ChessBase. When we're talking about analyzing our games to improve, uh, we have to understand that there's different reasons we might analyze a game or annotate a game and you know some people may annotate a game for entertainment or for instruction but when you're annotating for improvement there's just a couple principles that you want to understand the first one is the 80 20 rule and that rule is that 80 percent of the benefit that is to be gained will maybe come from 20 percent of the work or the the material that you have. So we really want to look at the critical positions in our game that we need to improve upon. Also, that there's three dimensions, or at least uh, there's probably more, but three general dimensions that we want to look at when it comes to improving. Uh, what aspects of our chess knowledge, so that could be in the opening or middle game principles, tactical patterns, or different plans within specific opening structures, what types of knowledge do we uh, need to improve upon? We also have to look at our thought process. That might include our calculations, our evaluation skills, who, who's better in this position, uh, what aspects um, of the position do we focus on, maybe too much or maybe not enough. And then we also have to look at our personal state. Were we tired? Were we distracted? So uh, when it comes to annotating it for improvement, we want to focus on these two principles. The first step in the actual process, or at least uh, the minimal step, would be what I call self-annotation. And this is where you put down uh, on paper or on your computer what you thought during the game and why you thought it, and try to capture all of the, the thoughts and emotions and actions that you took during the game. Uh, some examples would be variations you considered and why. Thoughts you had about the position, you know, were you better, were you worse, uh, what plans did you have. Things that distracted you, uh, did you, if you were playing online, did you get a phone call that you answered, or did you browse the internet while you were playing during your opponent's move. And if possible, and you can especially do this on, on uh, ICC, for example, the time you used on each move. You know, maybe there's certain moves that you should have spent more time on, or maybe there's moves that you spent too much time on. So having this information is important. Also, this is a good time if you had any post-mortem analysis with your opponent. Include that here as well. Basically, just trying to capture all of the thoughts before you go into any deep analysis. The next step is you want to generate questions. And this is where that 80-20 come, rule comes in. You want to find the critical positions that are going to give you the most bang for your buck. Of course, if you have unli unlimited time, which very few of us have, you can tear apart every single decision, every single thought, every single move you made. However, for most of us who have other things to do and other responsibilities, we want to just find maybe the three or four critical positions in the game that we need to analyze. So we want to discover the most important aspects for improvement. So this would include positions where you were confused or surprised, turning points during the game, and that would be where you thought you were winning and then all of a sudden you were losing or it was even or uh, you were even and then all of a sudden you were winning. Those are always important points to analyze. Uh, transitions from the opening, middle game, and end game. All of these aspects require different mindsets and you know, did you change your mindset appropriately? And uh, I have here using the chess engine and what I do sometimes is I will go through and not look at the moves that the chess engine is generating but instead I will look for the change in evaluation and this will help me find uh, the biggest turning points. It could be a blunder and uh, or it could be something more subtle. So I try to find the three or four largest uh, changes in evaluation where maybe uh, white was winning during one move and then in the next move white is suddenly even or suddenly a negative 0.5 on the evaluation. So I use the chess engine that way to just kind of screen 
the positions that I want to take a closer look at. The next step is analysis and corrections. This is where you look at those critical positions and then you try to find the truth in the position. And it's not just the moves that you're making, but also uh, the thought process that maybe you took during that position. Or maybe it could be something like uh, trying to focus, you know, increase your attention or focus during specific positions. So in general, you would follow the steps of analyzing on your own, and this would be, you know, looking at the positions critically by yourself, and then using stronger players, you know, maybe friends of yours or coaches if you work with one to help you to find better moves or better thought processes. And then I would use references. This is particularly helpful in the opening where you can look up if you have a book on your opening repertoire, you can look that up or in a chess database. And finally, you can use the chess engine particularly to help you find tactical blunders and help you improve that way. The final step is conclusions. And here you want to collect uh, positions for review. Maybe it was a tactical blunder you had. Maybe it was a new strategic motif that you were not as strong in. And you want to keep that for future review. You want to update your opening database. If you're keeping one, hopefully you are. Uh, whether it be in a program like Chessbase or, or um, Chess Opening Wizard any changes there or any surprises you had in the opening that you didn't know about, hopefully after this analysis you now have a better idea of what to do. And then also plans for future study and training. Maybe you are you find over analyzing a few of these games that you are particularly weak in specific positions. So you want to do a little more work in that. So, so keep that down. Uh, for example, I keep a journal uh, on my computer about the different types of things I'm trying to do to improve. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this short guide useful. Again, I will be making videos breaking down some of these steps into a little more detail, especially using uh, tools like Chessbase and showing you how I use them. But uh, leave any comments or questions. I'll be sure to get back to you. Also, if you hadn't seen it already, I had a great interview with Greg Liberto, the head coach, and we talk about how to crush your ants and play your best game ever. Check that out by clicking on the image to the right.